Okay, good morning, good morning. How's everybody? Let's fix a few things over here. This is good. Okay. How are you today? Let's, uh, well, people are still loading into this. Uh, I want to say good morning. It's a beautiful day today. I hope everybody's having an amazing, amazing morning and uh, are waking up ready to go and conquer today because that's what we can do conquer one day at a time so let's um let's start by while we load the people i think i have a few participants still coming in here on zoom and uh, uh also on the instagram so let's let's wait um as we wait let's do our one minute of silence let me bring down this camera a little bit more Okay, much better. Okay, so let's close our eyes and have a minute of silence here. For all the victims of this virus, for the darkness that is going on in the world right now, to bring some light and uh, light to those families and those affected, let's close our eyes for a minute. All right, yes, we have some more people here. Let's get started. We have super interesting uh, stuff today. Uh, I'm gonna cover a few things. Uh, yes, I did mention last week that I'm gonna go through a little bit of a process of how to visualize, which is a super important tool. It's probably one of the most important tools that I've uh, came across and I've used in my life and I had the best results. Uh, so, but before we jump into that, I want to have a, a little bit of a, a discussion and kind of like a review of uh, a, what we've been discussing a little bit. And uh, for those that they just have come in here new, uh, you know, a little bit of understanding of what we're talking about, what we're doing here. This so is just to, you know, reiterate one more time that everything I'm doing right now is just based on my experience, what's worked for me, what's worked in my personal life, and me wanting to share with you and see if you find any benefit of or any of this stuff and if you do great and if you don't you know don't pay attention to the things that I'm saying then uh, just grab whatever feels good so I want to I want I want you guys to, to we want to cover a little bit of what the understanding of the subconscious mind is uh, because that's a key element to to practice all these things of the positive negative uh, the, the visualization the incantations and all the all the things all the tools that we've been practicing here so you know, what, what is a subconscious mind? Your subconscious mind is always working, okay? So you need to learn how to use it. You need to learn how to use the subconscious mind because the subconscious mind is uh, objective, you know? It's, uh, it, doesn't, it does not distinguish the difference uh, into something positive or something negative. The subconscious mind just grabs it like a sponge and digests it. And then when you go to bed or what, something happens, you just basically... Uh, you know, uh, using that, you know, so you have so many negative thoughts, so many negative news, so many negatives are coming. You need to find a way how to control that subconscious mind. So the way I like to look at it, uh, the subconscious and the subconscious mind is that the conscious mind, which is something that we have control over it, you know, what we want to watch, what we want to listen, what we want to see, what we want to think. Uh, that's what we have control over it. I like to compare the conscious mind as a farmer, right? And the subconscious mind is the field where that farmer works. So if that farmer goes and in the mornings wakes up and waters, the, you know, puts the seeds, waters the seeds, takes care of the, of the thing, takes out weeds, you know, you can use that as an analogy as like bad thoughts, news, you know, take the weeds out. News, as, as you know, I repeat many times, I don't watch the news. This is just very overwhelming. So you remove those weeds. 
and then your seats are more protected. Um, if you, we talked about last week about, if you have people that come in and calling you right now, you know, like very negative in fear, fear is more contagious than the coronavirus. I can guarantee you that. So if you jump into those conversations and you jump into the fear, you're gonna get really quick into that fear mode and, and then you're screwed. So, so look at the, the field of, the, your field is the subconscious mind and then you are the farmer, your conscious mind. So what, you need to be selective of who you're gonna hang out with, what topics of conversations you're gonna have, what are you gonna watch, what are you wanna read, uh, everything, right? That, that's why we have control over it. Everything else we don't. So let's just focus on what we have control over it. So if the, if the subconscious mind is the farm, the farm uh, and, the, and the conscious mind is the farmer, uh, why don't we purposely select what we're gonna be thinking of? And this all is going to come together once we talk about the visualization, because you're going to select what you're going to think. But it's really important that you know what you want. And that's why we discuss, and I, I teach a class on uh, the book Think and Grow Rich, because uh, that's a book that focuses on having your burning desire, you know, having what is your big why, why you do everything you do, what motivates you when you wake up in the morning, all that kind of stuff, exactly. So there are five keys to programming your mind. You know, number one, it would be, we must have a definite purpose, a big why. Why is that I wake up every morning? Why is it that I work so hard? Why is it that I, that I do everything I do? What's the big why in my life? A lot of people really don't know what they want. They don't really know what their goals, and that's why goal setting is important because it helps you understand and adjust to where you wanna go in life. So picture this, picture you get in a taxi, and you tell the taxi driver, hey, I want you to take me somewhere. I haven't decided yet, just drive. Imagine how expensive, how long, how, what a waste of time, what a waste of money that ride would be. It's a little bit of, you know, I use that analogy always, uh, when a lot of people heard me say this before, but it's like, there's no need to do that. That's the most inefficient waste of time to do. So imagine with our lives, if we don't know where we're going, if we don't know what our goal is, if we know what we want, uh, let's, I think it's time to do it and it's time to do it now. No Monday, no next month, no in the beginning of the month, no next year, no in the beginning of the year. It doesn't matter. Right now, use the quarantine as the perfect time to do it because it doesn't matter if it's Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Sunday right now. So let's, let's, let's start doing it now. You know, let's set goals. Let's write down the goals, writing down, you know, the journals. I talk about you. This, this is important to write down everything you want. So let's write down our goals. Let's start having a direction of where we want to go. And everything that we're going to do here is going to be a lot easier if you know what the goal and your final destination is and what are the little goals they're going to get you to get to that big goal, okay? So, number one, we must have a definite purpose, our why. Now, I forgot to tell you in prior um, uh, sessions that we had here that I am uploading all these videos and all these classes and all these sessions into my YouTube channel. When you YouTube, uh, when you Google my YouTube, uh, my name, you're gonna see there's like two or three different YouTubes in there. The, the one that you wanna be looking at is the one that says Santiago and I'm official and I'm wearing a white t-shirt and a leather jacket and I have a hair kind of like this, uh, just without the beard, which is gonna be going soon. Uh, <laughs> so if you miss this or you wanna re release it again or whatever, just go to YouTube, find me, find the one that says official. Uh, with the leather jacket, white t-shirt, that's the one. Uh, and then just watch, I have a ton of them. I also uploaded, I think, two years worth of uh, the class that I teach about Think and Grow Rich in, in, my, in my office. So you can just go and grab that too and, and, and check, check it out and see if you like it. Uh, okay, so we do the step number one. Step number two, the power of auto-suggestion. You have to auto-suggest yourself. And that's how you start tapping into the subconscious mind. So you consciously, the farmer, is going to go and start tapping into the field and into your subconscious mind by auto-suggesting. I, I, I spoke with you uh, either the week before or last week about how I get in the treadmill and I sound like a maniac repeating my goal for the year. That's a form of auto-suggestion. If you want to record yourself saying something that you want to 
feel or you want to be or your goal or, or what is the person uh, that you're looking for uh, going to look like or anything. Just record yourself. And when you go on a run, you can maybe repeat that. I mean, there's a ton of things that you can repeat that they, they, you can memorize. Like, you know, one of the things that I, I learned from Anthony Robbins was every day and every way I'm feeling healthier, happier and wealthier. Or you can say every day in every way, I'm healthier, happier and wealthier. I am is a very, very strong a word to use and it's very important because when you say I am it's like present it's like it is right now you are healthy you're strong you're rich you're wealthy whatever it is that you want use the I am no I want I am now because your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference whether it's now it's 10 years from now is five years from now so see these little tweaks little things that I learned through the years and by making mistakes or by listening to someone and, and adjusting and tuning up or someone teaching me I have great mentors too uh, the, to the universe you need to give clear messages so what you want be precise and be careful on how you ask because you know a lot of times I you know hear my, I used to hear myself and now I hear agents saying uh, if I close escrow I'm gonna go and take my family on a trip well, if it's not as strong as when, when I close escrow, I'm going to go and take my family on a trip. See, it's a very, very small little difference, but it makes a huge, huge difference in the, in the long term. Uh, I don't play golf, but, uh, you know, I, I hear that when, when you're playing golf and you're going to hit a ball, you know, adjusting your, your club and your, your aim and everything by millimeters can make meters of differences down the, down, down the road. It's kind of like the same thing, right? So these little things, watch what you say, watch when you're speaking, what comes out of your mouth, because what comes out of your mouth, you're hearing it. And although you think you're just hearing it, your sponge field subconscious mind is absorbing and absorbing and absorbing all that. Don't you have dreams sometimes, like you, you've been driving around and you see something that it, was, it didn't seem important. You saw, you're driving and you saw a uh, a red convertible car and you looked at it and it wasn't that important and then you go and you have a dream with a red convertible car. Well, that happens because your subconscious mind is always paying attention and as I told you, the subconscious mind is objective. It doesn't know if that's a positive thing or a bad, a bad thing or, or a negative thing. Uh, it doesn't really make a difference. So you need to be watching all the time. So step number three, uh, use the power of emotions. That's probably the most important thing. Uh, let's think about that our emotions, uh, and I'm sure you guys heard this many times, but I'd like to repeat it and, uh, because, you know, I repeat to myself all the time and I find it that it's important that I repeat it all the time and I heard it and I read it and everything, but I think the constant reminder is super important, at least for me. So think about your emotions being a thermometer, right? So if you're not feeling good, then something is up right? If you're feeling sad, depressed, I mean, if you Google, there's a chart, I'm going to try to find it, I'm going to post it on, on Instagram. There is a chart of emotions that goes from the highest emotion you can feel of love, you know, and, and up to the lowest emotion of anger, disappointment, frustration, and it goes, goes all the way up to, it starts changing, becoming positive to the, all the positive. So you need to look at that. It's cool. It's a cool thing to look because you're going to recognize emotions that you might be feeling right now, or you felt sometime or you're going to feel. And if you have the ability to recognize when you're feeling that way and you say, I got to do something to change this feeling right now, because if you're not feeling good and in the positive side of the emotions, everything that you're working for, your goals, your, your, your incantations, your visualization and everything is not going to be in alignment with, you know, the creator of the, of the universe or, you know, whatever you believe in. So in order to be con connected with that and, you know, communication with that and have the results, you need to be feeling good. You know, we're supposed to be feeling good. Yes, sometimes you're going to feel shitty. Sometimes shit happens and it's good that sometimes bad thing happens and you feel that way because then you're aware of it. Right. Um, I read a book uh, uh, and in that book, one of the things I spoke is the law of, the, the law of polarity. Lay, I speak in Spanish and sometimes in a little bit. So the law of polarity, the book was The Science of Getting Rich. It was written by Wallace D. Waddles and it's an incredible book. And, uh, and it speaks about mostly, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. And it's got a bunch of laws in there. And one of the laws that are in there is the law of polarity. So for every positive, there's a negative. And for every negative, there's a positive. So, and then it's also the law of contrast. Contrast is what makes you realize that 
there are great times there and you can feel good. Like, you know, you work hard, you have to deal with some stuff, some, some unpleasant clients, maybe some unpleasant uh, situations. Uh, but when you deal with that, you always need to keep in mind that, you know, this is just part of life to feel that way now. But then there will be a moment where you're going to go on a vacation or you're going to have a break or something where you're going to feel good. So it is important to have both because if everything was the same, if everything was great and perfect and beautiful and everything and you never had any bad feelings, then you wouldn't know the difference. It would be very, very boring, very monotonous. And, uh, and I think you just be like, you won't know the difference, but the bad moments are the ones that make you appreciate the great moments. When you go, uh, like me, for example, when I go back to Bolivia and I visit my family and it's so great and it's, it's, it's such a you know, moment of love and, and memories and seeing friends from, from school from since we were little brings emotions, even all their emotions that get me super excited and you're vibrating at that level and it feels so good and then you got to go and say goodbye and you're so sad and you're jumping in the plane, although I have an amazing life in here, thank God. But in the beginning when I was going back and I, I wasn't doing as good here and I was starting here, I was missing everything, you know, food, family, friends, culture, everything. It was, it was tough, but you know, one day I started reading this book and I realized, and I was like, well, this is what makes me value more the moments that I'm with my family, with my parents, with my friends, eating the food that I like is, is you know, having, having that contrast. So use the power of your emotions and I will post later uh, a chart and it's easy to find if you Google chart of emotions and there is negative all the way to positive. And if you can find a way how to, you know, if you're feeling bad, find a way how to switch that. You know, I mentioned to you many times that I'm like not doing good. I'm having a little bit of a negative emotion or something. And I switch what I'm doing because also in your body is what, what you have the ability to change things, right? Um, you can change your physiology. You know, I have a, a little trampoline in my office, you know, and sometimes I have a bad phone call. I hang up and, uh, you know, Laura, my, assi my assistant or people that work with me see me sometimes jump in the trampoline. I jump, 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 jump get my blood going and listen to some nice music and I just go back into my desk and I continue working. Uh, sometimes it requires for me to go and uh, go and watch a sci-fi movie in the movie theater. I just go in the movie theater, turn off my phone, checked out for a couple hours and I'm in that world of the movies and takes me out of a little bit of my mind that is, you know, torturing me with, oh, this didn't happen, why this happened, or why is this, why that? Uh, and that also gets me in track again. Uh, I, you heard me saying that I go and jump in the ocean quite often. You know, that's, that's a great one it's cold here in California the water is cold especially right now and when you go in there there is you know shakes you you know it change whether you like it or not it's going to change your your way you feel right now um, so let's recap a little bit we must have a definite purpose uh, power uh, of auto suggestion okay then we have the power of our emotions you know it's our thermometer that tells us whether we're on track or not four is what we're going to discuss in the second half of this uh, in a little bit more detail is the visualization. Such an important, important thing. And, uh, and visualization is, has been proven scientifically, you know, it's not just like, oh, wow, visualize this kind of, you know, hopeful kind of thing, but it's been proven, you know, you have, uh, the system is called the RAS, R-A-S, the reticular activated system in your brain. So we have about 11 million thoughts that bombard our brain every second. Okay, and if we were to take everything at face value, if we were to take everything that we watch in uh, in TV, everything that we watch in social media, everything that we not selecting and is happening at the same time and taking by face value, we will go crazy. Probably our brain will melt. But the reticular activating system is what has been programmed through our life since we were kids. You went to school, you have a teacher that told you something, it got in there. You have a teacher that told you you cannot do that, it got in there. You got a parent that told you the money doesn't grow on trees, it got in there. So you've been programmed some way. So your reticular activated system is just selecting what you're going to think. And unfortunately, a lot of us, in my case, for example, I was programmed to think negative and programmed to think differently. So I had to train myself to change that. And it takes time, you know, it's not like I'm going to sit, I'm going to do these exercises for three weeks or six months and I'm going to conquer it. No, I've been doing this for now 14 years, I think. And, uh, and I still pull off the wagon, you know, and I need to get back in track again. But now I do it a lot faster and a lot easier. So I think that uh, the visualization is what reshapes our particular activating system. 
if you can choose now and visualize on where you want to be, what you want to have, what you want to feel, then you're going to start changing that. And what's going to happen is your brain now, when you look at social media, when you watch TV or you're walking in the street, have, did it ever happen that you, you know, you had a car and out of a sudden you saw a car that you like and you like that car and you really never, never notice about that car. And now that you pay attention and you say, oh, I really like that car and you involve the emotions with it. Oh, I, I will feel good. I will look good driving that car. And now you involve your emotions that has been become part of your, your, your subconscious mind now. Now you're going to see that car everywhere in all colors and you're going to dream about the car. That's because of this. So we're going to learn how to visualize to reprogram that so now we can be paying attention to things that really matter uh, and we're going to start feeling the things that we want to feel we're going to start watching programs that are going to you know everything is going to be along the same so that's why it's so important to visualize and number five out of the five keys to program your mind is persistent and perception okay you have to be persistent. You can try this for a little bit and say it's not working. Uh, let's go back to the example of the seeds in the field. You can't plant something and wake up the next day and want to have an avocado. It doesn't work that way. Or want to go and pick up fruit. You gotta wait, you gotta plant, you gotta take care of it, you gotta take out the weeds, you gotta water it, you need to add maybe a little bit more dirt, you need to take out the weeds again, and you need to wake up again, you need to water again, and then it's gonna to start to coming out, coming out, coming out. But what happens is if you don't have persistence and you give up before time, you're gonna say, oh, this doesn't work, and you're gonna stop doing that. And what happens when you stop watering a plant? What happens when you start taking care of the weeds? The plant's gonna die, never, it's never gonna come up. So same thing, you need to have persistence, persistence, persistence. And that perception is also important, you know? What's your perception on things, you know? Like you need to make sure that when you're doing this, you need to be aware that this is, this is working. It's going to work. I feel better. And the fact that you feel better is an indicator that you're, doing the, you're on the right track. Okay. So uh, let's go to the next step, which is basically going to be visualize. Now, when you want to visualize, you need to think about why, what, what, do I, what, what do I want to visualize about? Do I want to visualize uh, being with my dream love partner? Do I want to visualize my dream work and my dream job? What does that feel like? Do I want to visualize having that material thing, a boat, a helicopter, a car? A, I don't know, whatever, right? We all have different, different desires. Uh, do we visualize being in peace? Visualize being in love? Anything that you're going to want to attract, you need to kind of start thinking about it, right? Because you need to know where, where you want to go, how you want to feel, where you want to be. So, when it comes to visualize, I'll give you a little secret on how to do it because a lot of times it's very hard. So we're going to learn first how to quiet our mind and how to meditate because meditation is great to quiet your mind. And then when your mind's quiet, then it's easier to jump into visualizing. It's hard to visualize something and feel that you are there when your brain is bombarding you with everything that's happening, what you're going to do today and what happened this and I, I got in a fight with this person or, or whatever it is, it's going to distract you. So it feels you need to quiet your mind. So one of the little tips that helped me in, in the beginning uh, on how to get those feel, how can I feel that I'm there it's, it's, it's so far? I mean, I mean, to have that, I'm, I'm, I'm so far from my goals and all that kind of stuff, but start with very simple things. Go find a room that is quiet, yeah? Uh, ideally with dim light where you're not gonna hear noise. I mean, one of the things that I do is I put my, my headphones and uh, with my headphones on, I do this because I don't want the car to drive, so some noise or something distract me. I, I'm, I have ADD and I get distracted with a um, fly, flies by and I already lost my train of thought. So you gotta close your eyes, you gotta cover your ears. Uh, sometimes I use very, very low volume meditation music that you can find. And then I start bringing down, breathing, focusing on the breath and all the kind of stuff. But one of the things that helped me with visualization was I got in that position and I try to think about something easy to do. Okay, I'm going to get up right now. I'm going to go and pet my dog. I'm going to kiss my dog. I'm going to hear what noise. You need, you need to start involving your emotions. That's what it's all about visualization. So what's going to feel when I hug my dog? The hair, he's so cute. He's going to make a little noise. He's going to shake his tail. What, you know, he smells good. He smells bad. Whatever it is. So get up from your position of meditation. Find your dog hug him, kiss him, and actually experience that for real, right? 
Now go back to the meditation position and visualize doing the exact same thing you did again. Okay? I know, sounds crazy, whatever. But what happens is on something so simple like that, you have involved smell, sight, feeling of love, touching, all that kind of stuff. Now when you go and sit down, it's so fresh, it just happened that when you sit down to visualize again, you're gonna close your eyes. I mean, this picture again, how, oh, I just walked into that room. I remember how many steps I took even. I know he was sitting on the couch and uh, I came and I hug him and I kiss him and I smell him and he needs a bath. Uh, and then you start visualizing. Now you're involving again all those emotions you felt. Mm, the smell, the touch, the happiness, everything you felt. That's a little exercise. What it does is like a muscle, right? Like when you go to the gym, you don't start lifting 100 pounds. You start with 10 pounds. And then you go to 20. Then you go to 30 and you start building up, building up that muscle. Same thing with the visualization. Then one day get up and go and turn on the shower and put your hand in and feel how that cold water feels. Take it out, dry your hand. What does feel? Again, involve as many emotions as you can. Then go back to your position, close your eyes and visualize yourself taking the steps to your bathroom, turning on the shower, feeling the cold water. And when you do these exercises, then it's going to be easier for you, your mind, your brain to imagine things that you don't have yet and being in places that you're not there yet. Okay. Okay. So next. Okay. One of the important things to know is, and I, and I always think about having, I mean, we just, we just discussed right now about having the burning desire, having that big why. You need to, you need to have a direction of where you want to be, an idea of, I want to be a grandfather one day. I want to be sitting on a big table, having dinner with my children and my grandkids and my wife and and, you know, I want to picture that that's what I wanted in life always. I always wanted to be married. I wanted to have a good family. That's what I wanted. Some people don't want that. Some people want to be, I want to be a priest. I want to be a, whatever it is, right? So you need to find out what is it that you want because that's going to change on how you're going to go about this whole thing. So, uh, you know, it's, I have like five steps, actually six steps, uh, on jumping into the meditation. And I was going to do a guided meditation today, but I don't know where everybody is. I don't know if everybody can do it. Uh, so I'm just going to give you the tips on how to do it. It's super easy. I go one by one on what works for me, how I did it. Uh, that tip that I gave you about doing the dog, the shower, grabbing something, involving texture, feelings, emotions, and all your senses is going to help you practice that muscle and, and it will make it easier for you to visualize. And now you can go and start visualizing things that are you know, you cannot go right now. Like, let's say for me, if I want to be on a vacation and I sometimes meditate on being in a nice boat, uh, what is that going to feel like? Well, I don't have a boat right now. I don't know where the boat is. All that I don't know. I just know that now I have the ability like this to go in. And I've done this actually with closest friends. You know, uh, we were in Mexico on a vacation with uh, Stefan, uh, James, John. And I did a guided meditation while we were uh, sitting there and, and on how that would feel. And I walked him through it and they, got, they, they were like, oh, this was cool. So find a quiet place, sit once. You need to sit down and there's two ways to sit down. For those that you have, uh, you know, no problem sitting in the, in the lotus position, cross legs and the floor, make sure that your back straight. It's very important that your spine is straight with you know, with, with above, like vertical position, because that's a position where we connect and receive better the information. Palms up, right? I don't care if you do this, this, whatever, but palms up, you know, resting in your knees. And then obviously, super important, close your eyes. I do put my headphones because I just get distracted easily. And that's why it's better to do it early in the morning when there's less noise or late at night. But if, you're not, if you didn't do it, you can do it any time. Just, you know, cover your ears because that, I'm telling you, is going to help. You know, lotus position, straight back, close your eyes, and start by breathing. Take at least 10 to 15 deep breaths. And uh, there is actually an app called Calm that they have a breathing exercise you can choose by minutes. You can do the breathing exercise from one minute to 30 minutes, I think, or even more. So I think a five minutes is a good three minutes to start minimum and then you can race into doing a five six minutes i wouldn't do 30 unless you really want to get into the breathing but uh, i think for meditating and, and visualizing purposes you just want to you just want to clear your brain and you want to quiet your brain so you go and sit down in that position 
deep breaths like that and do that 10, 12 times and focus and something like, how does it feel the air coming strongly in your nostrils? And when you blow it, what does it feel? Uh, you know, there is the left nostril and the right nostril exercise. You can just feel the right, how it goes in. And then when you go out and the next going in, you, you feel the left. And what this is doing basically is taking your attention into your breathing, into your nostrils, into the air. And it's made you stop thinking about the million other things that were like just bombarding you, right? So if you do that and you just, you're going to feel already more relaxed, you're going to calm your mind. And once you do that, once your mind slows down and, uh, you know, you have clarity of, of what you want and where you want to go, then think of the place you want to be, you know, think about the feelings you want to have. You need to think about, okay, uh, for me, I gave you, I have a few, you know, and sometimes I'm thinking about something and I don't feel really that great. Again, our emotions, that thermometer is telling me, hey, maybe meditate about this. And just I start thinking about the four, five, six visualizations I have. And uh, one feels, I feel more excited about it. I got, I guess, smiley about it and I feel more, you know, emotionally better. Okay, I'm going to do that one now. So let's say I'm going to do the one in the boat. Uh, and then I sit down and I start visualizing. And it's very important when I start visualizing that you mix with emotions now the word emotions uh i learned from someone that if you separate the e e equals energy right emotion energy in motion that's what emotions are you're changing the energy right so when you are visualizing like for example i give you an example i close my eyes i quiet my brain and again start visualizing and I start really picturing and i'm not here anymore i am in a boat right? Somewhere in the Mediterranean. And I'm sitting in that boat and it's nighttime and I'm barefoot and I had a great day with my family. Everybody's sleeping. And I'm just thinking about, okay, how does the weather feel? I'm, I'm with a shirt, without a shirt. It's a cold, it's a hat. I'm barefoot. I'm walking. What does the floor of the boat feel? Those boats normally have that hardwood floor that is so smooth. I'm feeling it because I'm being in one of them, right? And that helps also if you've been in places that you felt that already. So I'm walking in there and it's smooth, and the ocean is so flat, and what does it feel like? How do I feel? You know, and you start asking questions to yourself, like, how do I feel? Why do I feel like this? Why is it that I want this? And then ask the same questions again. Now I'm, now I'm gonna go and sit closer to the water. I'm gonna maybe put my feet inside the water. How does that feel? How do I feel? Why I'm doing this? And you constantly start asking those questions. Now, I feel like, you know, someone is coming or one of my, one of my kids woke up, you know, it's late and I'm sitting there just looking at the ocean and looking at the moon. How great is that moon reflecting into the ocean? What does that feel like? So every single detail. Now my kid woke up and said, he's Thursday. I'm going to get him a drink. I get myself a drink. And all of a sudden he sits with me and I'm like, come sit with me. You cannot sleep. Let's chat. And I'm talking to him. And what does that make me feel to share those nice moments with my children? Uh, so once you start doing that and you start to wander and wander in there and you're going to realize you really don't want to stop, you know? And a lot of times you get tired, your back hurts or whatever. So another position that is being helpful for me when my back starts hurting, although they sell, uh, I found on Amazon, these meditation cushions that you can sit so you, your legs don't get numb. Because my legs get numb sometimes because I meditate for long periods of time. So then my legs like numb, I can, you know, uh, it doesn't feel good. So uh, one of the, of the positions that is great, just sit in a chair. Sit in a chair. A chair actually helps you go all the way in the back and the rest helps you keep a straight position. Now your legs are not going to numb because you're not cross and you're not putting weight or pressure in any of them. And put your palms on top of your knees and then get in that position. That probably is more comfortable and easier. Uh, so that's a great position too. I don't, I don't find anything wrong with that. And the more comfortable you are, the less interruptions you're going to have because you're not going to be like, oh, my legs now is hurting or cramping or this is hurting or whatever. And it takes you out of that great feeling. Now you're like navigating into that boat with your family and this and that. You don't want to be interrupted. And if you can stay in that time and that visualization as long as possible, that's the most powerful thing you can do because now you're reprogramming your reticular art uh, activating system into what's what you want to feel, what is what you want. Now, out of the sudden, you're going to wake up one day, and I'm telling you, this has happened to me, and it's, it's kind of crazy, but you will wake up, and you go and pick up your mail a month later, and in your mail, there's a magazine of boats. It's like, 
how can I get a boat magazine? I never order it. Or you're going to get a call from a friend and he's like, hey, I'm going on a vacation. I, I rented this, chartered this boat. You want to come with us? Little things like that happen because what happens is once you, you practice this again a lot, then the universe, God, the creator is going to find the most efficient way to get it to you. You're going to get to meet someone that is going to lead you to that. Meet someone that is going to introduce you to someone that is going to lead you to that. You're going to come up with an idea that is going to help you do something. that's going to make you make the money that you're going to be able to afford to do that. Uh, and I'm using this as an example only. It can be anything, okay? And I don't want to use most of our time thinking of 10,000 examples, but I, I'm sure that you guys can find your own, your own examples on how to do this. I just gave you an example that's easy for me because I do it all the time. And it's that. I like going vacations. I like the ocean. I like the water. I like to be out there in the water. Uh, and that's what I connect to super fast. And when you, you're in the middle of doing and you start smiling, you know, a little bit like this, that's perfect. When you feel that one day, you got it. You got it. You know how to get there. And there's no way that you cannot do it again. Because the smile is your brain doesn't know that you are there or not. Now he thinks you're there. And if you're there, you're happy because that's what you want. So you start smiling. It's like now your muscles and your physiology has got involved. That means that you trick your brain. Okay, if you can do that once, you can do it a thousand times. So now you, you involve the emotions and you do all that and you ask those questions. Why? How does it feel? How does it make me feel? Why do I want that? You know, and constantly ask those questions. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move from the boat. And you know what? I'm going to jump in the ocean at night. What is that? Feel? Why would I want to do that? Maybe it feels good. You jump, you know, just think about that. I mean, in, in anything you want to do. And the step number six is when you finish your, your, your visualization, you want to release that in that great feeling and end it that way. And you want to also trust and have faith in God, in the creator, in the universe. Again, we all believe in different things, but you want to have faith and trust and finish that in a good note, feeling like, great. I feel great. That, that was an amazing visualization. I know it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. And then you take another deep 10 breaths to finish it. And then you get up and then you go to bed and you get up and you start your day and that's it. And then you just need to trust and release it and do that every day or twice a day. So that's kind of like why I've been doing. That's how my step-by-step visualization uh, that I practice. Uh, I gave you a few tips about the dog, about the water, about involving things with little exercise that will help you, you know, activate that muscle and, and train it. Um, uh, what I like to do at this point is maybe let's open up to some questions like we always do. And uh, uh, I'll start with, with, uh, with the ones here on, uh, on Zoom. Uh, I'll open up for questions, guys. Start going for it. And then I'm going to move this a little bit so I can see what the Instagram questions are. Okay. Uh, here it is. Oh, wow. It's my buddy from Bolivia, my friend since I was... A little kid just sign up. Okay, cool. So, Sergio, a friend of mine, good to see you, man. I'm glad you're signing up for these things all the way from Bolivia. There is a question here uh, from Roger. The Alba Group. What's up, Roger? I see you here every week. Thanks for joining. It says, in an industry where sometimes we find ourselves in negative situations, whether it's a client or another broker, how do you stay positive through the transaction? I mean, it's a choice, right? I mean, uh, uh, when it comes to brokers, I think we all need to work with each other. We all have the same goal. Uh, there's no reason to have animosities with brokers. So there's always a way how to connect with them and, uh, and, and talk, you know talk to them and, and, and find the common ground and, uh, and make things work. There's no reason why, you know, ultimately we are just a facilitator to our clients or what our clients want. We're, we're messengers, right? We're trying to make something happen, passing message from left and right and all that kind of stuff. So uh, again, there's a lot of techniques on how to stay positive. Uh, sometimes you get a call and you get a little angry. Again, thermometer, emotions, anger. Let's switch the anger and elevate it from anger to frustration which is a little bit more positive and then to another one and then you start climbing up and then you call them back and you find a solution that's really what i do hope that answers your question uh uh 
Okay, uh, this is a really important question. There is uh, an Instagram, someone uh, by the name of Ye Video. It says, what if you meditate for a long time and it doesn't work? Things you want just not coming. How not to lose the faith? Well, you can't. You can't give up. It, it, it doesn't fail. It cannot fail. Uh, there might be some adjustments that you need to do. Uh, meditation is, is not necessarily the tool to bring things into your life. It's the tool to quiet your brain so you can actually, you know, understand better, uh, think better, uh, come up with ideas better. But I think if you start visualizing the way I just explained right now, that actually helps you get things faster and, and things to happen. I think that is a lot of elements on that. You can't lose the faith. You need to know what's going to happen. I mean, what is going to happen when you're 30, 40, 50, 60, you cannot stop thinking that it's going to happen and lose the faith. Two, you need to be grateful for every little step that you're getting into it, every little change. You need to be grateful. And you need to be really grateful for the little thing that happened to get you to that big thing. And you cannot get uh, desperate. You need to stick, stick to it. You know, it works. You need to stick to it, stick to it, stick to it, and it will work. Uh, Vero Monsenko says, for a Mexican investor, what do you recommend buying and in which state of the country is better? Uh, wow, I mean, that's a, that's a little bit more of a personal kind of situation. I mean, a Mexican investor, I mean, what kind of investment it is? You know, let's start by the amount of money that he can invest because that will uh, tell you whether you can buy something in the west side of Los Angeles or you need to go and buy something in, you know, Atlanta. I don't know. So I think that, First, understand how much money and how much money the, the, the guy is willing to spend or the, the woman or whoever is the investor. And uh, that will give you direction of where you can actually afford to buy something. And then uh, I think that's a step number one. One more question out of, uh, out of Instagram and then we'll jump into the Zoom. I see a few in Zoom. I'd like to see a little bit more before I jump into that. Okay, this is a good question. R. Royds says, can you make a whole movie or needs to be only about a boat trip or only the dream house? Dude, if you can make a movie, that's amazing. It needs to be anything to get you excited. I usually grab smaller things to just get into it faster and do it because I don't visualize for three hours, okay? If you can visualize, start visualizing for one minute, two minutes feeling that way, it's a good starting point. I visualize for 15, 20 minutes max. But if you can make a movie of where, what your life is going to be, I mean, maybe it's arriving to the boat, driving the boat, coming back to your house, uh, inventing, whatever it is that you're doing, anything that gets you excited and gets you into that good place emotionally, do it. It doesn't have to be one thing. I'm just giving you that example. And not everybody's the same, by the way. I mean, I'm just sharing with you what works with me and then you need to apply it to what makes you more excited okay uh last last one from uh instagram from k brooks 29 is there a way to watch the videos later i can make it to live live because i work about yeah i get it so yes i just said in the beginning of this i've been uploading all these videos into my youtube channel and my youtube channel is santiago arana official site uh, I, I, I don't have a beard in that picture of that channel. I have a white v-neck t-shirt and I have a black leather jacket. That's the channel you want to sign up. And I have all these videos uploaded in there and more from two years ago. So if you, you feel free to go and check that out. All right, let's go here into, uh, oh, Cal Anne Isering joined this morning. How are you, Anne? I haven't seen you. Okay. Uh, Let's go with questions. Eduardo. Okay, Eduardo here said, exactly, there's no happiness without adversity. Life is easier when we understand that. Thank you for that. Let me go to the Q&A. I was looking at the comments, sorry. Here. Uh, Gustavo Barroso says, how would you build your database now? Thank you. Database, you know, uh, to build your database, is basically to collect information, telephone numbers, emails, and any information you can find into clients. Uh, how you collect your database now in moments that you cannot go out. I mean, let's think about this. I haven't even thought about it, but uh, if you have to go and collect your database right now, maybe cold calling is a good way to do it. 
you know, start calling people, asking how are they feeling, hope, hope that they're great with their families and engage. And, and then you have a telephone number, uh, maybe getting into social media and start like, you know, uh, getting information from people in there and start connecting with them. Uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit uh, tougher, I think, because you're not going out and meeting people. Uh, but for us that we're in the real estate business, you're going to get here and there a call. It's going to be a lot less, but if you get a call from someone, then you get that information from that person and everybody that you get in touch with every person, I usually put it in my, in my, in my database, you know, and even if I have just a name and an email and then I add more telephone numbers and everything, everybody you meet, if you go in a run with someone, uh, if you have a friend that says, I have a friend that is looking, you just need to collect and build a database. And again, it's years, right? You need to build a database in many years. So let's go with Stephen Katz. Hi, Santiago. Thank you for this. When you're forced to talk with someone who's negative, why do you, what do you do uh, to not take on their energy and low self-esteem? You know, look, I mean, you got to have empathy too. You know, you don't know what those people are going through. Uh, in, in my opinion, when you try to change someone that is negative and try to make him be positive right away, it doesn't really work that way. Perhaps there is things that you can do little by little for them to realize a uh, person that is very negative, normally they have ups and downs and there's times where they're really negative and their times are not that negative and you maybe want to find that little moment where they're not so negative to enter in that and slowly do because uh, in, in my experience with negative people, if you try to lecture them or try to talk about positive, it, it fires back. So you need to do it in a very subtle way and a very, very careful and uh, maybe you can create experiences with that person and if it's someone close to you, going a walk, going something, as we discussed in the beginning of these episodes, like being out, breathing air, exercising, it releases endorphins, releases, you know, chemicals that make you be more happy, more positive. So uh, that maybe is a way to do it. Find a little way when it is. And there are, there are people that just build that way and they're just too negative. I, I stopped talking and I stopped being friends with some people that they just I couldn't, you know, I couldn't because I was doing a very hard work to try to get here. And then in one hour that will meet with there, they were just dragging me back down. And unfortunately, I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, get rid of your friends or anything, but you need to really watch and be careful and take care of yourself, you know? So, uh, Gustavo, oh, Chris, Cristobal Matos. Did I pronounce that right? Cristobal Matos, this is, hi Santiago, do you use visualization boards? Do you keep always the same visualization scenes over time? Yes, of course, visualization boards, or vision boards that everybody knows. I love those. I have uh, many, I had many through the years. Uh, actually, my cousin, Misha, who now works at, at, at the agency too, uh, I remember walked in a house that I had 12 years ago when my first son was born. And, and I had my vision board, which it was not something, it was a big thing. It was like three by six, right next to my master bed, right there. When I wake up, I look at it. When I go to bed, I look at it. And I had their things that at the time were things that got me excited, you know, like a BMW, uh, uh, you know, a family. I, I had a picture of me with you know, a picture of a woman with, with kids, you know, and that was my idea of like having more kids because I just had a baby. Uh, I used to also cut in the visual board, like words, like faith, uh, happiness, success. Uh, and I just start putting together, you know, think about the world your, is your catalog and you start putting there. Maybe there was a watch that I like, you know, I used to have actually this watch in my vision board and now I'm wearing it. Right. So he came and looked at it. I remember he's told me this many times. that he came to the house, look at that. And he was like, in his mind was like, oh my God, all these things, this guy's crazy. What he thinks is going to hit the lottery or something. And what happens is we moved and I packed those vision boards. And when I took him off to hang him again, I started looking at it and I was like, well, and now I have two kids and my, and my wife. So that's happened. Uh, success, I'm starting to do really well. Success is here. I do have a BMW that I wanted to have. I do have now this watch and, and things start happening and you're like, oh, this stuff works. So then you need to redo it again. And one of the exercises that I used to do with my wife was we didn't have a lot of money and I used to work in restaurants and even for, even for New Year's, sometimes New Year's Eve at work. So I remember like 
if I had the opportunity to come back to the house early enough or, or I didn't work New Year's Eve, we will sit down, put nice music, turn on some candles. We'll buy a bunch of magazines. Great investment, by the way. Buy a bunch of magazines. We open a bottle of champagne and we start like cutting what we wanted and make our own vision boards. Great time to spend with your significant other. Very positive, very nice. And, you know, if you're married, you have things in common that you want to accomplish with that person. So we were like cutting kind of similar things and we we're sharing. That was a great exercise. So, yes, I do use the vision boards. I still have it. I change now, obviously, I want different things, things that I thought were important before. I don't like them anymore, so I remove them. There are other things that I think that are more important. I also mature, I change, so I find that that wasn't really something that I should get, and now I have other things. So I do have it now next to in my office, next to my desk on the left. It's gotta be in a place where you look at it constantly. And when you look at it, stare to it and feel and have, again, those feelings. You need to involve the emotions. So what is actually gonna feel to be there? Oh, that car. Oh, how is it going to feel to drive in that car? What's going to make me feel? Why I want it so bad? Or oh, that family or that building or that house or whatever it is that you want, right? Or oh, if you're a musician, that violin or your bicycle, whatever it is. So yes, vision boards are amazing. Okay, one more from Zoom. Thank you for this talk. Is there any good books you are reading now that are powerful that you recommend? Yes, there's many books that, that I like. I mentioned some of them. I will start by looking at uh, The Possible Effect by Joe Dispenza, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Uh, it's a great book. Uh, uh, I, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, The Surrender Experiment by... Uh, uh, last name is Singer, Michael Singer. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll post some, some ideas of books that are really cool. I put a list of five or six books uh, in my Instagram. I take, I take actually pictures of the front of the books and I put them in my story. All right. So let's go back to Instagram. I see there's a lot, question, a lot of questions in there. Let's go back to here. Thank you guys, all your nice comments. I see that, thank you so much. Oh my God, yes, it's Kay Brooks 29. She says, I'm an ESL teacher. For those of you who don't know, ESL it stands for English as a Second Language. Would you be able to share your experience on learning English for my students? I would love to do that. So when I moved here, as many of you know, I moved basically to learn English. Uh, but I only had $120 and I had an aunt that allowed me to stay in her couch for eight months. So I had a place to sleep and I had a little bit of money and I, you know, I was young. I was 23. It was May 2003. So I didn't speak any English and I couldn't afford to go to college or any of the courses that you need to pay a lot of money. So ESL became an, an amazing, you know, uh, program. Uh, and I signed up for one that was at night. So... It, it was it was a really 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 good experience because it wasn't a fancy school, uh, you know. Uh, I was obviously 23 and single, and I was you know I'm gonna go to classes. I was thinking maybe I'd meet a girl or something. It wasn't anything like that. The majority of the people were adults, uh, workers that work in the morning, and they only had time at night to learn English. So I actually met great people in there, uh, great friends. Uh, and I did, uh, I did learn English with ESL. I mean, I, uh, I used to take the bus, go to the, to the night school, uh, learn English. One of the things that really helped me uh, was I stopped speaking Spanish. And there were a lot, of, a lot of people that speak Spanish in there, but I was trying to see that way. And I, I felt bad because I wanted to also speak and become friendly with them, but I purposely wanted to learn English faster. So I stopped talking Spanish for about three months with everybody. And, uh, and that's the amount of time, three or four months it took for me to pick up English uh, to where it took me from being a bus boy on cleaning tables because I couldn't communicate to being upgraded to being a waiter in this restaurant. Uh, you know, now my good friend Andre used to be the general manager. So I was able to communicate. It wasn't perfect. I, my English is still needs work, but, uh, but it's a, an, an incredible system. And uh, for whoever is taking that, that course and, and that program, the ESL, it really works. I love it. I'm very grateful for ESL. Uh, let's go a few more questions. Uh, 
Okay, Santiago says in here from Gillian Wenzel. Can you please share one or two of your favorite quotes? Oh my God, I have so many amazing quotes that I like to share. Uh, one of them, based on what we discussed right now, is clear messages to the universe. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, Vero. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, what quotes uh, I can tell you right now that are related to what we're doing, okay? Uh, I posted one this morning on my Instagram that was really good by Albert Einstein. I don't know if you guys saw that. That, that was a good one. Uh, I'll give you the perfect quote right now to motivate you would be, Let me see here, I wrote down a bunch of quotes. I just wanna give you something that's related to what we're talking about. Now we're gonna lose the tenor tract. Uh, for those that, you know, I had a question in there that, you know, what if this stuff doesn't work? What if you're doing all the things and it doesn't work? Uh, what, when that happens, you start getting into fear. And one of the quotes that I like to use is, you can be fearful about something that you want, that you have faith that is gonna happen. Because if you have faith that you're gonna get there and you start doubting, that means that your faith is not strong enough, right? So uh, that's, that's one of the most powerful quotes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a little graphic on Instagram where I'm gonna put three of my favorite quotes today. Uh, I'm gonna line them up in there. Let's see here. Few more questions we're running out of time we're soon gonna drop in here thank you justin do you, do you like my hair what's the secret for my hair i can call you i'm well first you gotta have hair i think <laughs> but uh, thanks for that question uh okay so sometimes i'm concerned wow this is an interesting question sometimes i'm concerned that what if when I visualize and I really make, it really makes me happy? What if you spend so much time, effort, and when you get it, you are not happy? Well, it's all, it all, all going to depend on what you get, what you want. And that's why I think the root and the most important thing is, is your big why. And the big why of what you want in life, it should normally not have to be related with anything material, right? Uh, I think that when you're thinking about your big why or what you want in life, it should have to do with something more meaningful, uh, more spiritual, uh, more, uh, you know, love, more related to feelings, more related to something that means something in life. Because if you have something meaningful, you're not, you're not going to no want that. You might visualize on one in a car and then you get the car and you don't want it. Yeah, that's an easy solution. Then you sell it and then you think about something else. But I think if you feeling and thinking about something that is more meaningful, uh, I doubt that if you get to a point where you're happy or you, you feel that way, you're going to want to change your mind and you're not going to want it anymore, right? So thank you for asking that question. I think it's a valid question. All the questions are valid, but I think that maybe refocusing on what you want to make sure that that's something that you always going to want. Health, for example, you know, feeling healthy, feeling strong, visualize on feeling running when you're older and feeling great and feeling good shape and not getting sick. That would be something that you will never be disappointed or no one anymore, as an example. So that hope that that makes a lot of sense. Uh, guys, um, we, we run out of time again. My Instagram is going to cut in one minute and 22 seconds. Uh, it's 11 o'clock. Thanks for your patience. Uh, this time goes so fast. I, it goes fast for me. I enjoy sharing all this and talking about all this. And uh, I hope you do too. Uh, I'll see you next week. Let's, let's see you again next Wednesday at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, think about a couple other interesting topics that you will enjoy. Uh, love you all. Thank you for connecting. Thank you for being here. And go and make an amazing day today. It's going to be a beautiful day. And uh, thank you for being here again. <laughs>